Father, I know I'm in good hands. Father, it is your hands. Father, I know there's a good plan. Cause Father, it is your plan. Father, at times when I worry, I'm sorry. And times when I forget who I am, who oh, I am, a child of God, I am, born of a kind, I am, made in your image, I am, the apple of your eye. Father, I know that I'm in good hands. Father, I'm in your hands. How you doing once again? God bless you. I pray that everything in your life is well. I pray that God is finding favor and laying his hand upon everything that you're doing. I came across a verse today I have to share with you. Sometimes we make the way we worship God so deep, you got to know the Greek, the Hebrew, the Arabic, the this and the that. This is so simple because most of us who are searching for God because he wants us to search for him. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So he wants us to seek after him. But in all you're getting, get an understanding. This is what I found. In our getting to know him, in our search for him, we are searching really for eternal life because most of us have been taught that there's a hell and we are afraid and scared that we might go to the place called hell. Ah, uh, ain't that right? Tell your neighbor, say he's on to something. If you are scared of hell, and if you're not scared of hell, I want you to know that there's a life after this life. And the next life, you're going to go into it for all of eternity. This is very short stop here. The Bible says our life is like a, a vapor. It's, it's so short here. But then you're going to spend eternal life someplace else. In your spending eternal life someplace else, what is it that's going to get us to that bridge to eternal life? The Bible says, here's the verse, the Bible says this is eternal life, that we might know God uh -huh, and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Now, I've been looking at that because some people say, why do we need Jesus? I mean, I, I, I serve God. Why do we need a middleman? Why do we need Jesus? See, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But since God is a spirit, he has given us tangible bodies. We are also mind, body, spirit, soul. But since we live in this body, God doesn't live in a body. Uh huh. So what God has done is, since he doesn't know what it's like when we cry, since he doesn't know what it's like when we uh, have need of food and when we're hungry, the scripture says, Jesus says, prepare for me a body that I might go down. I'll be the mediator. I'll be the one since I'm in, Christ was in spirit form. Since I'm in, since we're in spirit form, when God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, Christ said, prepare for me a body. I'll go down. I will, I will be the mediator between God and man. You see that? There was a scene with Denzel Washington and he was playing a drug dealer and something happened and, 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 and Denzel Washington told the boys, nobody else talks to directly to me. You got that? In other words, when you're not on my level, you go through this dude and that dude will relate everything to me. Y'all got that? And they all said yes. That's like what God has done. Anything that comes to him, 
has to come through the mediator. And listen, from now on, don't nobody talk to me directly. You understand? You got business with me. You talk to Huey. Huey, you talk to me. You got it? All right. Damn it, never on the phone. You got it? I got it. All right. So if you can understand it naturally, you should be able to understand it spiritually. Why do we need Jesus? Because there's one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ. Now, it is so simple. Uh, let me throw this in here real quick, because it just came to my mind. And since it came to my mind, I might as well share it with you. And then I'm going to close. There is a war right now taking place between Hamas and Israel. The people over in Israel right now that you guys are calling Jews, Jewish, the Jewish nation, the state of Israel, those people don't even believe Jesus Christ has come. Those people don't even believe Jesus is the Lord. They don't even believe. And those are the Jew, Jewish people that you guys keep calling Israel. <laughs> So, when you guys go to these churches, the churches are going to be telling you we stand with Israel. How do you stand with those Jewish people? They don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, or the life. In fact, here in America, there's over 200. Listen to me. There's 200 distinct religions inside of Christianity. So when you go to your church, which one do you go to? There's over 200 distinct religions inside of just Christianity. So which one, which one you go to? So you saying the Muslims are wrong, the Buddhists are wrong, everybody's wrong. What God said is believe in God and Jesus whom he sent. What I'm going to tell you is Israel is right here in America. Israel is in Jamaica. Israel is in Haiti. The Bible says, if you read Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, God said, I'm going to send you into Egypt, which is the house of bondage for the second time. But this time when I send you, I'm going to send you on ships. There's one group of people who are the Hebrew Israelites Look at this map. They came out of a place called Negro land. And when they went into slavery, and I got to keep saying this, if you don't know this by now, when they went into slavery, they were shipped all around the world according to Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. They were in Negro land. When they came out of Negro land, look at the map right there. Who was in Negro land? Look at the group of people right there. That map tells you that those group of people, ooh, that is the kingdom. See that KM? That is the kingdom of Judah. Kingdom of Judah is who they sold around the world for the transatlantic slave trade. The kingdom of Judah. So if they sold the kingdom of Judah, put the camera back on me. The Bible says Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. This is what Judah looks like. The Bible says he's the color of burnt bronze or color of burnt brass. This is the color of burnt brass or burnt bronze. So if I look like this, pay attention. Then what do my cousins look like? They look like me too. The Bible says here in the book of Jeremiah, Judah mourneth and they are black. The Bible says right here, there's a group of people going around calling themselves Jews, but they're not Jews. The Bible says right here that they're liars. And they are the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says of the Hebrews, I know of your poverty. Don't people over there ain't in poverty. So you guys keep saying you standing with Jew, the Jew, the estate of Israel. Them people don't even believe Jesus Christ is the Lord. How are you standing with them people? As I close, eternal life is getting to know God. And while you're getting to know God, walking in grace does not replace the everlasting covenant God made with Abraham in the book of Genesis. Grace does not replace an everlasting covenant. What is the covenant? 
I'm going to bless them that bless you, Abraham. There's a covenant God made. And then God said, I'm going to form a new covenant with who? He didn't say the whole world. I'm going to form a new covenant with Israel and the house of Judah. No longer are they going to have to keep turning that Bible scriptures and looking through Bible verses to see how to please me. I'm going to send my spirit into them and write it upon their heart. Who? Israel and the house of Judah. Now, everybody else can receive the Holy Spirit and can come underneath the laws, the statutes, and the commandments that Israel forever has to walk in. It's a covenant. It's an agreement between God and Israel. Israel split. The upper nation of Israel was called Israel. The lower kingdom was called Judah. So now you have the tribes and God made a covenant. You say he made a covenant with the church. I'm not finding that nowhere in the Bible. He made a covenant with Israel and the house of Judah. And the Bible, you guys keep saying Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is, is coming back. But the Bible says he's coming back because there's a group of people who enslaved another group of people. And I'll be more specific. You enslaved Judah. And Jesus said, I'm going to come back. Here's the scriptures right here. Right here. He said, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to gather all the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat. When I gather all the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat, I'm going to plead with them. And there's going to be a judgment for how you treated Judah. You shedded innocent blood to the house of Judah. So people keep saying Jesus is coming back. He's not coming back like a little lamb. This time he's coming back on a white horse and all the nations. And I'll be more specific. The white European nations, they took Judah and they hung Judah here in America and around the world, hung them on trees. They took Judah down to Florida and fed the babies to the alligators as alligator bait. They took black men, tied them up and stretched them out and let horses pull them apart. Judah. They took black men and dipped them in hot oil, bubbling oil, while all the uh, whole towns would come together and watch this Negro Hebrew from the tribe of Judah burn. They would bring him up out of the hot oil and cut off a finger, another finger, dip him down, bring him back up as he's hollering and screaming for his life. He's hollering, Yahweh Shai saved me, while the Ku Klux Klan is saying, we got this one in Jesus' name. And would dip him back down, bring him back up. And as he's howling because his skin is coming off of him, they chop off another finger. This is a repetition of what has been done to the children of Judah here in America. So while they're saying, can we all get along every single day? You turn the TV on, it's, just, it's almost like normal now. It should not be normal to see people that look like me begging to have their children come home at night. No other nation is telling their children when the police pull you over, get your hands up. No other nation is doing that. We need to have an honest conversation on our way to glory. So I stopped by on my way to glory to tell you. Eternal life is getting to know God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. But while we're here, we need to start holding some real honest conversations. Is that all right? I'm going to close the book. We're going to talk again. I got some work for you. Keep watching. God bless you.